morning dear students of class 12 welcome to the english online learning class today we are going to further continue with the text of the lesson should wizard hit mommy by john updike so let us have a brief recap of what we did in the previous class it is a story about the perspective of a little child and the story begins with jack the father who used to tell his daughter jo story out of his head means out of his imagination now the purpose of storytelling was to put the daughter to sleep and the storytelling sessions were like a custom it began when the girl was 2 and it continued for 2 years now the girl was 4 years old and father was running short of stories his head was almost empty because his stock of stories had almost finished now all those stories had the basic structure and the structure was that there used to be a small creature called gojo he could be any creature this was a small variation in all the stories otherwise the structure remained the same and the creature gojo had some problem even the problem could be different in every story and roger went to the wise old owl for solution of his problem the owl directed him to the wizard and the wizard solved the problem with his magic skill casting the magic spell but on payment basis when the time came to make payment roger used to run short of money so the wizard came to his help he tell him where he would find the extra pennies after payment roger used to join his friends and reach home just in time when his father would be back from boston and then they enjoyed the supper and the story was over it had a very happy ending but this ritual the strike of storytelling almost was becoming useless and father was feeling very exhausted tired because joe would not sleep any more now now let us continue further the little girl not so little any more the bumps of feet made under the covers were half way down the bed the big double bed and that they let her in for naps and when she was sick had at last arranged herself and from the way her fat face deep in the pillow shone in the sunlight sifting through the drawn shades it did not seem fantastic that some magic would occur and she would take her nap like an infant of two her brother bobby was too and already asleep with his bottle jack asked who shall the story about today so the girl jo was growing up she was adding to her height and so uh, at the same time while the story was being told by father she was wide awake and father felt as if some magic would occur and she would fall to sleep like a small brother bobby who was of two years was already asleep with his bottle so that day's incident that particular day which is being referred to in the story so father asked his daughter who shall the story be about today so just see before beginning the story father took his daughter's opinion who shall he base his story today that was a very democratic style of function now 
as the lesson progresses, we will notice Jack's art of storytelling, how he is an expert storyteller. So he wants to know from the listener, his daughter, who is the listener here, what should the story be about? Roger, Joe squeezed her eyes shut and smiled to be thinking she was thinking. Her eyes opened, her mother's blue. Come, she said for me. So she had the same color of her mother's eye blue and she just squeezed her eyes shut and smiled and then she already knew the character Roger but then she said very strongly that she wants this creature to be skunk. A new animal. They must talk about skunks at nursery school. Have a fresh hero momentarily stirred Jack to creative enthusiasm. All right, he said. Once upon a time, in the deep dark woods, there was a tiny little creature by the name of Roger Skunk. And he smelled very bad. So, the creative mind of Jack started working. And as the daughter said, she wants the story to be of skunk. Probably she had read about skunks. She was told about skunks at the nursery school. So immediately the creative mind of Father Jack started working. And he began his story by saying, Once upon a time in the deep dark woods. Now just see, deep dark woods makes the listener imagine how deep, how dark the woods would be. And once upon a time, the traditional manner to begin the story. And then he said there was a tiny little creature. One could imagine the size of this creature, Roger Skunk. And the problem was that he smelled very bad. Yes, Joe said. Her interest was aroused. He smelled so bad that none of the other little woodland creatures would play with him. Jo looked at him solemnly. She hadn't foreseen this. Wherever he would go out to play, Jack continued with zest, with enthusiasm, remembering certain humiliation of his own childhood. All of the other little tiny creatures would cry, Ah, oh, ah, oh, here comes Roger's stinking stinky skunk and they would run away and Roger skunk would stand there all alone and two little round tears would fall from his eyes. The corners of Joe's mouth dropped down and a lower lip bent forward as he traced with a forefinger along the side of her nose the course of one of Roger skunk's tears. Won't he see the owl? she asked in a high and faintly roughened voice. So, father introduced the problem element and the problem element was that the skunk smelled bad. And because he smelled bad, he was, he had to suffer humiliation, insults, and he was not accepted in his friend's circle. And they would call him names, calling him stinky skunk. And Roger was feeling very isolated very uh, left out from his friends and because of this dejection small tears rolled down from his eyes and imagining all this the insult of Roger's tongue even Joe could feel that emotion and tears started coming from her eyes and Father enjoyed because that set the success of his storytelling. Now, while he was describing Roger Skunk's humiliation, it had certain elements of his own life. So there was an autobiographical element that was introduced here 
the sufferings, the insults that he had to face in his childhood days. That he was trying to show through the humiliation of Roger. And he really enjoyed the way his daughter also felt the emotion. And immediately she was excited and she wanted Roger's tongue's problem to be solved. And she said, would he not see the owl? She asked in a high and faintly roughened voice. Sitting on the bed beside her, Jack felt the cover stuck as her legs twitched tensely. He was pleased with this moment. He was telling her something true, something she must know and had no wish to hurry on. So he was enjoying this moment because he was trying to tell his daughter something true. But downstairs her chair scraped and he realized he must get down to help clear paint the living wood work. So clear his wife. She was already working and she was dragging the chair and he could hear the noise and he now realized that he had to finish his story and he had to join his wife in helping her paint the living room wood. So we we'll stop here for today and we'll continue with the remaining lesson in next class. So students, go through the lesson, come up with your problems if any and write down some important points or doubts in your English notebook. Thank you. Have a